With the Lucky Land Slots, you can get lucky just about anywhere. This is your captain speaking. Uh, we've got clear runway and the weather's fine, but we're just going to circle up here a while and uh, get lucky. No, no, nothing like that. It's just these cash prizes add up quick. So I suggest you sit back, keep your tray table upright, and start getting lucky. Play for free at LuckyLandsLots.com. Are you feeling lucky? No purchase necessary. Void where prohibited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details. From various locations via the miracle of Skype, it's the 40th anniversary season of the LTN Hour. Let's talk NASCAR with your host, Todd Bailey. Co-hosts Brian Schmidt, P.J. Noodleman, and producer Dangerous Dan Margetta. Call the show anytime at 414-421-7901. And now, the creator and host of the Fastest Hour in Radio, Todd Bailing. You know, sometimes I wonder, how are we possibly going to do one hour? There's nothing happening in NASCAR. <laughs> I am wrong about that. Hello there, everybody. I'm Todd Bailing in Phoenix, Arizona, joined by my three partners, beginning with Brian Schmidt in beautiful downtown Utsberg, USA. Hi, Brian. Morning. Morning. Thanks. The biggest question on everybody's mind is, Denny Hamlin going to make it a short track sweep for the spring? Uh, You won at Bristol, you won at Richmond, and he's really good at Martinsville. Three out of the last four races on short tracks, P.J. Noodleman. From all the way over on the mighty Mississippi River in Trempolo, Wisconsin. Hi, PJ. Hey, hey, good morning. And our own Dan Margetta of St. Francis, USA. Back on the back on the other side of the state again. Yeah, back on, on the regular side of my, where I live at. But regular? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I, guess, uh, I guess I guess we'll have to see. Maybe if it comes down to a late race restart, you'll have a shot, right? Well, you know, the, oh my God, did we have the the uh, the week to talk about a Richmond race when Denny Hamlin supposedly jumped a restart and Martin Truex Jr. lost his mind, totally lost his composure, was so pissed he couldn't handle it. Really, basically, that's what it was. And um, uh, so Hamlin goes and, and wins. And yeah, did he jump the restart? You know, from from watching uh, short track racing, I would say uh, the mentality is that the leader controls the restart. And really, Hamlin, by getting out of the pits ahead of Martin Truex, who's, Brian, it seemed to me his crew is the one that lost that race for him. Absolutely, yeah. And, and I'm, under, I'm under the same agreement where the, the leader starts should start the race and in most forms of racing across the country we do delaware double file restarts where the leader's all out front by himself that's the reward you get for being the leader um and in this instance yeah i mean if martin trucks would have been on the inside you know he would have been able to do that now did he jump it sure i mean but nascar has become such a black and white you have the box you have the line it has to be this and that and and to hear all these people complain that he should have been disqualified for that i mean seriously we complain when we hear people getting disqualified, and the big thing NASCAR wanted is when you turn the TV off at night and you see that guy in victory lane, that's the guy you want to know won the race. Mm-hmm. So now you got people on the other side. I, I think a lot of it is because people don't like Denny Hamlin. That's all, that's all it is. Hamlin is not yeah. a likable guy. I mean, the only solution you could really have to it, which would make it probably a little better, is like you do in short track racing where if, if they think it's a jump start, throw the caution before they come back around and you do it again. You yeah. jump it twice, you get pushed back a spot. Or other than that, I don't know. Yeah, or whatever. Yeah, whatever you set up in advance. And so, actually, I thought it was much ado about nothing. Hamlin won it, and that's just the way it is. And Truex just didn't like finishing fourth. And who could blame him? It was his. I don't, I don't think we even looked at the restart if he didn't whine about it at the end because we didn't see the actual start, actually, because the camera was on like a speed shot. And then nobody really even thought much about it. It was bad until he said, Oh, he went early. And if you look at the. SMT data that they show out. Yeah, he went early, but the 19 went early too. So what do you do? And Kyle Larson, by the way, who's cautioned there with he and Bubba, uh, that's what really brought this whole thing to a to a head at the end of the race. And uh, uh, Kyle Larson, by the way, on the poll today at Martinsville, 96.034 miles per hour. 
That's 19.718 around that uh, half-mile track. So flat half-mile. Bubba, by the way, starting second, uh, he has, uh, I don't know if anybody's noticed, but for the most part, he shut his mouth and he's racing better. Let's face facts. He's he's looking better, a lot better, I think. Uh, and Chase Elliott, who's, by the way, um, you know, Chase has been quiet lately, hasn't he, gang? We're, what happened to him, and uh, is today the day he busts out? I don't know. I I really I have a lot of questions about his quote unquote Gatawana right now. I mean, he had a great car last week, started up in the front. You thought, and he kind of just lollygagged around all day and didn't really, never was a threat. Um, when you interviewed him afterwards, he was it just seemed lackadaisical about it. And I don't know. I just I don't. I'm not a feelings guy. Anybody who knows me knows I hate it when I talk about feelings, but I don't like the feelings I'm getting from him right now. <clears throat> Interesting. Well, uh, we'll see. Mark Truex starts fourth, <clears throat> and so, you know, that's the same suspects. And what we're going to see, unfortunately, uh, this is a 500-lap race where they're going to shift 2,000 times with this package they have on there. Uh, you know, we let's give them the horsepower. But today we're going to go back and see the same, you know, short track package we have had, which is track position, track position, track position. You're not going to do anything unless you're up front. You're going to have to skip. You're going to have to take two some time to get yourself some track position. And then that's going to hurt you in the long run. If everything goes, you know, in the right direction, perhaps things will work out for you. But I don't know. It seems like the guys that are up front will be up front all day. That just seems to be the way things have gone. How did they have time to shift at Martinsville? I mean, it seemed like in the past it was always so much stuff going on. You had some guys next to you, and there's more of that beating and banging stuff. But they have time to actually shift a couple times a lap plus hold the car down. Because, I mean, you don't have banking to kind of catch your car here. you got to muscle around this track. That's what the sequential gearbox does for you. It allows shifting to be that much easier. And allows you to use the car to slow you down and the car to get you going off the corner much quicker. Quite opposite of what the Xfinity cars are, where that the shifting is once you're in once you're up to fifth, you're in there and that's what you're in for the whole rest of the race. So this is the unfortunate side of this and what we've been talking about for almost two years now with this new car, that it, it the shifting and, and the way these cars are geared, it's kind of ruined the short track racing. We'll have to keep our fingers crossed for a good race today. You know, it's not impossible. Uh, They have been racing at Martinsville. They ran the Xfinity Series yesterday. Eric Almarola, in his self-imposed semi-retirement, won that Xfinity race. I didn't see the race. I was actually at Firebird Raceway for the Arizona Nationals uh, NHRA race yesterday, which was... uh, Pretty entertaining. Um, See anybody important, Todd? I did. I did, uh, which I'll talk about in just a second here. (laughs) Sam Mayer finished second in that thing. Uh, Travis, uh, uh, Travis, I almost said Travis Quapple. Travis Quapple's son, Carson, in his initial race in the Xfinity Series, finished fourth and did himself rather well. And speaking of Wisconsin guys that showed up as I'm looking the list this morning, Dexter Bean was there. And finished 20th? I, I didn't know Dexter still raced. Once in a while. Once in a while. He's from over on my side of the state. I yeah, used to run at Lacrosse Speedway as well. West, West B, Wisconsin. Yeah, uh, yeah, town. In the tr- truck series, Christian Eckes won the truck race. Ty Majeski won the pole, set a new track record, finished second, and took over the points lead in the truck series. Overall, had a pretty darn good day. Could have won that thing. It seemed like there was a little pissing match going on between himself and his crew chief there, PJ. Was that my imagination? No, not really. Ty wanted to put a certain setup in the car and Joe let him, but he said, if it doesn't work, it's on you. And obviously it didn't work perfectly, but it uh, was a pretty good setup. Just needed to be tweaked a little bit. And I don't know if there was hurt feelings there about the setup. And I don't know. Hmm. Interesting. It's kind of well, interesting at the end of that Xfinity race yesterday when they were talking to Eric Elmarola, he says, now I can take that asterisk away from my name when it comes to Xfinity Series wins. Think oh, back right. now how long that was when he was replaced at the Milwaukee Mile by Denny Hamlin. I mean, oh, what, what wow. Year was that? What year was that, Dan? 2009. They parked cars in a helicopter pad and Hamlin couldn't land. I was working that race, actually. Yeah. And it was weird in the media center after they – 
you know, the sponsor pulled him out of the car and put Denny in. He went a lap or two down. And he made those laps up and won the race. And then we're sitting there thinking, you know, the winner of this race is even on the property because he's ticked off. He left. <laughs> I was uh, fortunate, as I mentioned, to have gone to the uh, Firebird Raceway yesterday for uh, the NHRA show. And Tony Stewart was there. I went with my friend Scott Hansen, who knows Tony. If you'll remember Tony uh, when he when he raced at Slinger in the uh, – uh, SRX series. They had, you know, local celebrity crew chiefs and uh, Scott Hansen was Tony Stewart's crew chief for that race. And they got to know each other pretty good. And uh, so when Scott went over to talk to him, I tagged along and uh, uh, Tony, God bless him. He says he remembered me, which is kind of cool, I guess. And, uh, but I got to ask him a pretty important question. And uh, I'm going to intimate what his answer was. I have not even told my uh, teammates here on LTN what he said. I We're so him, excited for you I, to intimate it. Yeah, there you go. Um, point blank, I asked him, hey, what about all these rumors about you selling one of your charters? I'll give you his answer when we come back. Spring is in the air, and PMF Landscape Supply in West Bend has everything you need. With fresh mulch arriving daily, from premium hardwood mulch to hemlock and pine bark to enviro mulch in red, gold, chocolate brown, and black colors. PMF also has a large variety of decorative stone and granite, as well as field stone, topsoil, and compost. For all your landscaping needs, visit PMF Landscape Supply, 5470 River Road in West Bend. Call 262-338-8800 or visit pmflandscape.com. Friends of racing for many years, PMF Landscape Supply in West Bend. This Saturday at Dells Raceway Park, the Alive for Five Super Late Model Treat Turn for the 10th Annual Icebreaker 100, presented by Wecker Automotive. See the Midwest's best super late model drivers go door-to-door in heart-pounding racing action for the first big event of the 2024 racing season, plus Midwest Truck Series and 602 Late Models. Gates open at 11, qualifying at 12.30 and racing at 2. Get your tickets online at DellsRaceWayPark.com and save. Dell's Raceway Park, located two miles west of I-1994 at exit 85, just off Highway 12. Dell's Raceway Park, where the best in the Midwest race. Rain date, Sunday, April 14th. From racing engines to street engines, long blocks to turnkey packages, or complete custom engines, just ask and Wagner Automotive can fill your needs. All backed by many years of racing experience. These years of experience have provided reliability and performance that customers need to win races. Wagner's has been building championship winning engines for top teams from NASCAR to short tracks in your backyard. This expertise has carried over to street engines they supply to top custom car builders. The Wagner Company, in the heart of Wisconsin, is out fitted with the state-of-the-art machinery necessary to design, manufacture, build, and test custom engines and their accessory parts. Dyno services are independently available for anyone needed to test their engine. Wagner's company can also provide you or your company with production CNC machining or welding services. All your questions and requests are handled personally by Casey Wagner. Just give us a call at 920-394-3557 or visit our website at Wagner Automotive. This, keeping on the down low here, is the Dan Patrick Show. And I think Russ is a big upgrade there. I don't think he was going to Pittsburgh unless they guaranteed that he would be the starter. You start the season, you know you're going to be 9-8 and eight with Mike Tom. It just happens he guarantees a winning record. Now can Russ give you two wins, maybe three wins, because you're in a very tough division. Dan Patrick. The Dan Patrick Show. Weekday mornings 8 to 11 on the Big 920 and your iHeartRadio app. My goodness, it's a busy week here in the Phoenix area. We've got the Final Four going on. We're very close to my house here at the Cardinals Stadium. We've got uh, Arizona Bike Week going on, which is uh, uh, Westworld, where the Bear Jackson auction is. That that place is a zoo on that part of town, which is the northeast side. I, I live on the northwest side. That's the northeast side. And then, of course, down in Chandler, which is the southeast side, we've got the Firebird uh, Raceway in the Arizona nationals uh chandler and um uh, so tony stewart's there you know he's racing his wife leah pruitt's top fuel how, how do you go this guy is amazing don't you think how he can go from you know dirt 
cars to paved cars to now he's straight lining and he's doing all right for himself as a rookie in that series. Think of it as a rookie being 50 some years old. What did you think but, of the top fuel cars when they launched off? That's the first time you've seen him. Uh, yeah. Um, Scott Hansen, who, like I mentioned, knows uh, Stuart, uh, got us some some uh, passes, and we went there yesterday, and it was pretty cool. And uh, so when they went, when Scott and Tony uh, spoke, and then I, I was, you know, hanging out. Judy was boring. Hello. Then Judy discovered chumbacasino.com. It's my little escape. Now Judy's the life of the party. Oh, baby, Mama's bringing home the bacon. Whoa. Take it easy, Judy. <laughs> The Chumba Life is for everybody. So go to ChumbaCasino.com and play over 100 casino-style games. Join today and play for free for your chance to redeem some serious prizes. ChumbaCasino.com. No purchase necessary. Voidware prohibited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details. Qué emoción que todos los primos vienen a cenar. <laughs> sí, sí, sí. Va a ser genial verlos a todos y pasar tiempo juntos. Dios mío, Jorge, ese es... El BRS podría interrumpir esta reunión. El virus respiratorio sin sitial puede ser grave en adultos mayores, incluyendo a aquellos con ciertas enfermedades como asma, ICC o EPOC. ¿Tienes 60 años o más? Habla hoy con tu médico o farmacéutico acerca de la vacunación contra el BRS, patrocinado por GSK. How are things, you know? He lives in Havasu, Arizona, and he's got a place there, and he's, you know, blah, blah, blah. Hey, Tony... There's a lot of rumors this week about you selling one of your charters. Is it for sale? Yes, it is. What he said was that the business model for three cars would be much better for them than four cars. Now, probably having to do with the fact that they can't find enough sponsorship, don't you think? Mm, yeah. Um, you know, which one would he sell? Uh, that's irrelevant at this point. <clears throat> and who would buy it? That's also ir irrelevant. <clears throat> the fact that everybody's, you know, talking about it and uh, I, nobody ever bothered to ask the guy, I suppose, you know. But, uh, yeah, he's uh, they are looking into uh, selling. And then I said something about getting 40 mil for that wouldn't be the worst thing in the world. He goes, yeah, no kidding. So um, that's that's where he's at. Um, also, he said something I thought was pretty interesting. He said, industry-wide, nobody likes working on these cars. Nobody likes these cars. Mm. <laughs> that's for darn sure. Dan, we got a dose of that when we were in Daytona, right? Oh, yeah, and that's because you can't do nothing, really. I mean, all, all this part of the working on the cars was finding a little bit of an advantage and doing your own, a little bit of your own thing, and everything's the same now, so... You just it's a glorified IROC series. Right. I mean, you're you're just putting pieces together. It doesn't seem like you're actually doing something that is, is you know, think of what would be worthwhile if you just worked on the cars. Oh, by the way, uh, since I mentioned, you know, Tony, he acted like I, he knew me. And I, I said, I, I, I'm the announcer at Slinger. He says immediately, you know, that was the best show that SRX put on was at Slinger Speedway. Yeah, I thought so. But, of course, I'm biased you know but anyway it was pretty cool uh, uh ha having a little chat with them and uh um she's uh she's not pregnant yet just so you know um, did you verify that uh <laughs> it's hard to ask isn't it hey how's that going oh great no. are you pregnant or are you just gaining weight it was <laughs> tony has not though correct i mean since the last time you saw him todd oh actually <laughs> tony looks pretty uh, slim down you know and that's a, that's a, he's looking pretty good and it was amazing because i don't you know i don't know very much about top fuel dragsters he pulled in with that thing and they got to work and tony was doing as much work as anybody on the team draining fuel out of the thing and i thought geez yeah. why why are we saving all that fuel well for one it's five thousand dollars for a 55 gallon drum no, my, wow. my math is pretty bad, but it, that comes out to about a hundred hundred dollars a gallon ish, doesn't it? A little less than that. I bet he wasn't wearing any kind of breathing protection either. He just breathing in those fumes. Oh yeah, no problem. Yeah, I'm just draining. And that it. stuff. I mean, that's. I remember when we were at Chicago last year, the guys behind us were telling us, "What is it? Like a two inch fuel line that supplies those cars, and they burn. I forget how many gallons a second. It's absolutely insane." I thought I heard Tony Stewart say somewhere around 
seven to eight thousand dollars per run it costs to run those cars, I which is think, why he wow. doesn't have as much practice as he Some, should have because you simply just can't go out there and do run after run after run after run when it costs that much. It, yeah, and I think it used eleven gallons for a run. I'm not positive about that. If I remember something, <laughs> thing is maybe running two minutes total. <laughs> and then of course they do that little warm up. Oh know, yeah, the burnout. That, which is about probably another few gallons, you know. No wonder they're saving every drop they can, you know. It's a pretty expensive little. Yeah, get the stand behind one and they fired it up and get. get yeah, the... I got to tell you something. I about crapped myself when those things came by. That was amazing. Oh, my God. It's life changing. Heaven. And, you know, that's just two cars. Las Vegas is coming up uh, in the middle of this month. Is it next weekend? And yes, next weekend. Or wide. I can't imagine four. What that has to shake the windows of all the 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 big hotels on the strip. I swear to God, it's uh, if you've never seen it, you have to do it once in your life. NHRA is absolutely amazing. But they come to Chicago the weekend before Memorial Day. That's probably the closest they come to us. Oh, They're okay. up in Brainerd, and and I think sometime in the middle of the year, and then uh, the U.S. Nationals down in Indianapolis Labor Day weekend. All right, there you go. We'll be back. As a growing manufacturing company, we needed security solutions. We chose Bonafide because of the services they offer, pricing, and trusted reputation. But it's their outstanding service and support that convinced us we made the right choice with Bonafide. When businesses need security, they contact Bonafide Security Solutions. From locks and alarms to safes and surveillance, we do it all. We are Bonafide. We protect what you value. For your free security survey, call us today or visit bonafidesafe.com. Miller Sales and Service is the Midwest's number one Bravo trailer dealer for customer service and satisfaction. Serving the area since 1939, Miller's is located on the corner of Highway 57 and K in Random Lake. As the Midwest's number one Bravo trailer dealer, Miller's has all kinds of Bravo trailers from 8 feet to 48 feet in stock. They also have a selection of B&B utility and dump trailers, reliable and Chilton open aluminum and steel trailers. With over 50 pre-owned low mileage cars, trucks, and SUVs, Miller's has just the vehicle you are looking for. Miller's also carries a full line of Alumacraft boats and Manitou pontoon boats, complete with Evinrude outboards. Why not buy from racers who know what racers want and need? With Miller's sales and service on the corner of Highway 57 and K in Random Lake. Call Jerry, Tom, or Brad Miller today at 920-994-4358. That's Miller's Sales and Service, 920-994-4358. This is Two Pros and a Cup of Joe. We're getting back into it. Tiki Barber, former NFL running back, longtime New York Giant. He was on WFAN, and, well, this is how it played out. He's dead to us. He won't say it. You're dead to us, Saquon. Good luck putting it in context. Giants don't like Philly. That's their biggest rival. Pros, LeVar Arrington, Brady Quinn, and a cup of Joe. Jonas Knox. Weekday mornings, 5 to 8 a.m. on the Big 920 and your iHeartRadio app. If at any time you feel like uh, weighing in on any of the things we talk about on this program, and we're kind of all over the map, you can call us at 414-421-7901. We have Biff the Cheese Farmer. (laughs) (laughs) Biff, where are you calling from? Racine. Well... That's not too far away. They, I'm sure they have cheese farms in Racine. Nice talking to you. Oh, Let's yeah. talk NASCAR. Yeah, he, I had heard that they were going to close that State Park Speedway in Willisaw. Yeah, that's I mean, another thing we were going to talk about here. This uh, oh. this week it was broken that uh, Ron Wimmer, uh, that's Scott uh, Scott's dad, along with Scott, uh, not so much Chris because he's doing other things, but uh, they've they've been running that uh, racetrack up in Wausau the last few years. This was not a surprise. I had talked to Ron a couple of years ago at Kakana when I ran into him, and he said it was getting to be a bit much, and uh, there's a lot of work involved. He's not getting you know any younger like <laughs> like the rest of me. Anyway, uh, I understand why he would want to back away from it. Uh, I am sure 
that that was a, a good uh, for sale sign he just posted. They're not going to, uh, you know, I think there was a rumor or something about it, it was going to be a housing development. Ah, where does that stuff come from? If somebody wanted to buy the track, it would be for sale. Let's put it that way. But I don't believe that uh, Ron and Scott are going to uh, go past the end of this year, even though they didn't close the door. If you read or heard it right, it, it wasn't completely closed. If someone came to them and said, hey, uh, we'll put a race on there. We'll give you so much money and put a big race on every year. I think they would do that. But um, there are things that the track needs to keep going. You have to continually do upgrades. It, it's, uh, you know, the type of thing you have to put money into it. And uh, I think Ron has reached pretty much the end of his uh, rope with with wanting to do that. It's, it's a... Uh, Something for somebody that wants to put their their heart and soul into it, and uh, and I don't think Ron. I think that ship has sailed with Ron myself. So, um, but you're right, uh, Wausau. Uh, we need to find a buyer for that place, don't you think, there, uh, Biff? Yeah, well, like when Madison closed for a little bit, then it came back and was even better. I mean, I'm hoping maybe these people make it even better. Whoever buys it, we're hoping. Madison was a was a crazy set of circumstances, you know. It was uh, it, it was turned into a dirt track for one, and then the the promoters that had turned it into a dirt track had just the worst luck you could possibly have. Uh, when they finally got enough money together for a big purse, there was a lousy weather and it rained, and then you got guys dragging their cars from all over the place, and uh, and they were mad, and you know. Uh, they tried it a couple times and uh, and it went south in a hurry. The last ditch effort they made, they tried to get a license to run a dog track at uh, the Madison track. And when they didn't get it, it went to the Dells instead is when they uh, just walked away on the loan is what they did. And um, uh, it sat for a while and the promote and the bank that owned it had to find someone to put one event on per year to keep the license good and it had to be advertised and it had to be an automobile race so they the bank called wayne erickson and said yeah can you put a race on at madison and wayne says what the hell are you talking about and here's what we need so there was a a, like a one inch ad you had to promote it it was like a one inch ad in the in the like the checkered flag or midwest or something and then it and they had jerry eckhart and uh, andy went did one lap and that constituted a race and kept the license good until the bank finally said, we're not doing this anymore. Wayne, why don't you buy this track from us and we'll give you a killer deal on uh, whatever you need to get it going. And uh, the rest is history. That was, it reopened in 1992. So. And there, there's 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 there. What's that Biff? They, they used to have a second, like Miller Lake national there for, for a little while. Yeah, well, the Slinger Nationals was a uh, two-date event, and uh, when Wayne bought Madison, he took one of the two dates from Slinger and moved it over to Madison. So, yes. Okay. Biff, thanks for the call. We appreciate it. Okay. On the State Park thing, it says in their press release, while it cannot be said with 100% certainty but to answer questions, we do not foresee State Park Speedway existing as a racetrack past oh. this year. So oh, that, that there must be some change. things in the works already. And, and they also talk about heightened purses for some bigger events later this year. So keep your eyes on that. You know, the Deachins race is the biggest race they have there every year. So that could be pretty special for the last go around. We have another caller, uh, Randy, who says he's calling from Las Vegas. I am a bit sus- suspicious when I hear that. But how you doing, Randy? Hey, okay, not too bad. Yeah, I'm down here for the winter, and I, I'm blessed to have a neighbor that works at the casino, and he comps us uh, tickets for the suite for the races, the the NASCAR race, when they come in the, uh, the dragster at the four-lane strip, and I wanted to comment to, to you guys. I know Todd's been talking about it. It's yeah. like when you sit in the suite, you go out to have an open area where you can sit outside of the suite, and if you don't have your your beer can sitting down, it can be almost halfway full, and when they, when they fire them up and come by, they literally shake and almost fall over. I believe that. I absolutely do. It, it has to do something it, with the air, I think, because you can, you can feel it in it your like, body. 
you can feel it in your chest too, right, Todd? Like it's like, oh my god, oh my god, with it's a lick like, stick of heart like I have, uh, yes, uh, I'm, I'm, I might die right there, but boy, it'd be a hell of a show, wouldn't it? But I'll tell you those four lanes. It is that is something everybody's got to experience. It's just unbelievable, unbelievable, you know. I agree. I agree with but that. I, I just wanted to pass along the comments. Like I said, I'm blessed to come up here for the winter and. I, I visit my lady friend and uh, I get to see the NASCAR races and the in the drag strip and then I go home for the the good Boy, stuff at that's home. Great. You know? A woman and and tickets to a the lady a lady me. friend in Vegas. Yes, yeah, yeah I told Todd about that once before. And Eddie Eddie commented on it and uh, Todd started talking about the Philippines. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for the call, Randy. We appreciate it. <laughs> okay, uh, later, Todd. All right. Yes, quite a week we had, and um, one of the uh, the things that came out this week, we actually knew about it here, but we weren't privileged to be able to say anything about it, is our friend Lance Allen announced this week that he uh, his contract is not going to be renewed by Channel 4. Why is that important to anybody around that, especially that listens to this program? Because he's one of the few, very few guys <clears throat> who is not just race knowledgeable, but brings racing to his sports cast at Channel 4. And, um, well, he doesn't want to talk about it. We'll have him on after he's done. He's going to be there through Labor Day. And... Um, after that, we will be able to talk to him. But uh, they told him a while back, cut back on your race report. With the Lucky Land Slots, you can get lucky just about anywhere. This is your captain speaking. Uh, we've got clear runway and the weather's fine, but we're just going to circle up here a while and uh, get lucky. No, no, nothing like that. It's just these cash prizes add up quick. So I suggest you sit back, keep your tray table upright, and start getting lucky. Play for free at LuckyLandSlots.com. Are you feeling lucky? No purchase necessary. Void where prohibited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details. Qué emoción que todos los primos vienen a cenar. <laughs> sí, sí, sí. Va a ser genial verlos a todos y pasar tiempo juntos. Dios mío, Jorge, ese es... El BRS podría interrumpir esta reunión. El virus respiratorio sin sitial puede ser grave en adultos mayores, incluyendo a aquellos con ciertas enfermedades como asma, ICC o EPOC. ¿Tienes 60 años o más? Habla hoy con tu médico o farmacéutico acerca de la vacunación contra el BRS, patrocinado por GSK. You know, consultants do that. That happened to me when I was in radio full-time, too. We're glad you're listening. We're going to sneak away for a break, and we'll be back right after these. As a growing manufacturing company, we needed security solutions. We chose Bonafide because of the services they offer, pricing, and trusted reputation. But it's their outstanding service and support that convinced us we made the right choice with Bonafide. When businesses need security, they contact Bonafide Security Solutions. From locks and alarms to safes and surveillance, we do it all. We are Bonafide. We protect what you value. For your free security survey, call us today or visit bonafidesafe.com. This Saturday at Dell's Raceway Park, the Alive for Five Super Late Bottle Return for the 10th Annual Icebreaker 100, presented by Wegner Automotive. See the Midwest's best super late model drivers go door-to-door in heart-pounding racing action for the first big event of the 2024 racing season, plus Midwest Truck Series and 602 Late Models. Gates open at 11, qualifying at 12.30 and racing at 2. Get your tickets online at DellsRaceWayPark.com and save. Dell's Raceway Park, located two miles west of I-1994 at exit 85, just off Highway 12. Dell's Raceway Park, where the best in the Midwest race. Rain date, Sunday, April 14th. This, keep it on the down low here, is the Dan Patrick Show. We're finding that quarterbacks and what they do off the field may be as valuable as what they do on the field. Patrick Mahomes is following that blueprint. He decided that he was going to free up over $20 million in cap space this offseason. Mahomes is competing with Tom Brady, and now you want to see if you can get to seven seasons. Dan Patrick. The Dan Patrick Show. Weekday mornings 8 to 11 on the Big 920 and your iHeartRadio app. Dan Patrick, the best in the business, I think. Welcome back to the program. I uh, stopped in. There's 
where the racetrack is here at this uh, Firebird Raceway, it's also connected because it's all owned by the Indians uh, or Native Americans. I'm not sure what I'm supposed to call them. Uh, the Gila River Resorts and Casinos presents Wild Horse Pass, and we went over to their casino, and I grabbed the sheet. Uh, Hamlin is the favorite today at five to two. Uh, Blaney is six to one. Really? Truex uh, thirteen to two. Bell fifteen to two. Kyle Larson seven to one, and Ty Gibbs nine to one. Interesting, isn't it? Did I bet on any of those? No. That's, I have to be smart to do that. Who did I bet on? Well, I'll tell you later. A um, couple of things. Congratulations go out to Twin Lakes, Wisconsin's five-star bodies. Voted the Cup Series Supplier of the Year by the teams. I didn't know they had a vote. I don't know when he gets there when they get their award. I don't know what the award is, but it's a pretty cool thing to get either way. So, uh, congratulations to Five Star. Those bodies that they race with in the Cup Series, they all come from Wisconsin. Can you believe that? That's pretty cool, isn't it? And uh, here's another one that I thought was uh, interesting. By the way, uh, <laughs> you, you saw that Austin Dillon was complaining about his race strategy, and we thought, you know, why don't you get out of the car and put somebody else in it? That would be a good strategy right there. Well, you know, that can't happen. His crew chief, a guy by the name of Keith Rodden, was replaced this week. Uh, now, that's that's not just what's funny about this. Just Justin Alexander is uh, the new crew chief. But I want to go through the list of crew chiefs that uh, have come on that number three car. Of the last six, we had Slugger Labby, we had Justin Alexander, we had Danny Stockman, we had Justin Alexander, we had Keith Rodden, and now we have da, 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 Justin Alexander uh, back rotated back into the uh, – to the spotlight again. Keith Rodden will stay with uh, the company in an organizational role. I don't think it's going to matter there. I mean, I hate to say it, but I think time has run out on Austin Dillon. Time to move on and do something else. And if Childress Racing wants to move along and become a competitive team week in and week out, they need to have a different person in there. Kyle Busch, it's obvious he's frustrated as all get out there and he just can't do it on his own over there anymore. And if he doesn't have help, and that's what the Cup Series is. It's about the teams working together. They're not going to go anywhere. And I think that's what you're seeing. It's kind of like the Richard Petty Legacy Motorsports. You got to get something, something to kind of shake it up and get it back on track. And the kid, the grandkids, a dead weight. All right. So who do you put in, Jesse Love or Austin Hill? Those are your choices right now. I think either one of them would. Be, I mean, it's it's early for either one of them. And I don't know that Austin Hill gets along with anybody, so that would be a problem. But you know, I think in the future, Jesse Love would be probably a, a good pick there. He seems to have what it takes to get the job done. Um, I think Austin Hill and, and Kyle Busch would be great drama. Oh, <laughs> yeah, that would be, yeah, for sure. Just yes. what Childress needs. Or maybe you go out and, like, find a free agent, you know, find somebody that, that that's a did with Bush, right? I mean. Yeah, exactly. I mean, there, I mean, I don't know who, and what about the Stuart Haas things that one of those, one of those guys, there's four guys there. If they're going to maybe sell a charter, it be, might be one of them might there be might available. Be someone available. Good now, point, who, Dan. You know, who, who's good enough to turn the tide there. I don't know. I mean, Noah, Noah Gregson and Kyle Bush would be drama too. I think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They're both Vegas guys. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's right. Oh, geez. That's right. Yeah. So, I mean, there's, it's out there. Austin Dillon, you know, he really, it does seem like his time has, He's won four races, I think. How long has he been there? It's been a long time. I mean, the races races he's won, Justin Alexander was his crew chief. I mean, I saw his first one at Charlotte. That was a gas mileage deal in the 600. We saw a second win, Brian. That's when he wrecked Eric Almirola in the last lap of the Daytona 500. Yep. He's got, what, a win at Daytona. He won the rain race, didn't he, when they all crashed in the the first one? Yes, two years ago. Yep. And he's got one more. I think it's. Strategy must have been good, though, for those races. So why are you complaining about their strategy is just fine? And Keith Rodden came from Hendrick. I mean, he was one of the Hendrick uh, in that big mess, mix there. 
So, I mean, he's not bad. I mean, Rodden, I think he came up. I know it was through the Hendrick organization. I was like, was he with Dale Jr.'s team, maybe? Hmm. Who's that? Keith Rodden, the guy they replaced. He came yeah. through the mm-hmm. Knicks. He was part of the whole Hendrick group, and they moved around. But he, I thought he was pretty good, and that's why they, they took him. Interesting. They also replaced his uh, engineer this week, too. So, you know, you can't replace the driver when he's related to the owner. So I guess you just replace everybody around him. So interestingly enough, our buddy Hamlin has, uh, you know, between all the uh, the BS about him jumping to restart last week at Richmond to win, which I think is kind of, kind of a non-issue anyway, um, I, he got into a pissing match on the Internet on X this week. With Marcus Smith, who is Speedway Motorsports owner, uh, Bruton Smith's kid, okay? And he inherited everything, and he's running everything that Speedway Motorsports did. And they, re- they recently repaved the track out in uh, uh, the Sonoma. They call it Xfinity Raceway. They don't call it that anymore, do they? It's in Sonoma. I think it's just Sonoma. Sonoma. It's the road course. And it's coming up. The, the the new surface is already coming up. I don't. Did they even have a cup race on it yet? No, no they ran the the what used to be the Pirelli World Challenge was out there last week, and that's where it was coming up. So Hamlin naturally gets on X and starts talking about uh, you know how how poor and you know nobody low, low budget yeah, low budget nobody consults the drivers and this is what you get. And uh, Mar- <laughs> Marcus Smith says. There's ignorance for the whole world to see right there, at which I thought was so bad enough. But then he a couple of times referred to him as the almost NASCAR champion. I think he's just taking advantage of the fact that Hamlin is the antithesis of a popular driver. If we have a least popular driver, it might be Hamlin. And yet sometimes you think that, and they're not all that unpopular. They've got their fans. People like winners, right? I mean, Daryl Waltrip, look at how unpopular he was. And why? Because he won too much, probably. Also, he was a kind of a jag, but that's neither here nor there. Uh, he was a pretty good announcer. Uh, not, well, that, not that all stemmed from the negotiations with the with the new charter agreement coming up and how the money is going to go. Right now, the tracks get a big part of that charter money, and the teams want more. And uh, they kind of confirmed. I think Denny confirmed it this week at Martinsville, and it kind of yeah. got way too personal than it needed to be, and it was late at night. But yep. frustration you know. bubbling over, and maybe a few cocktails. <laughs> <laughs> That's what happens when you're on your computer and you drink. We're uh, glad you're tuned in. We got some results and a little more news from the world around and about NASCAR after these messages. Miller Sales and Service is the Midwest's number one Bravo trailer dealer for customer service and satisfaction. Serving the area since 1939, Miller's is located on the corner of Highway 57 and K in Random Lake. As the Midwest's number one Bravo trailer dealer, Miller's has all kinds of Bravo trailers from 8 feet to 48 feet in stock. They also have a selection of B&B utility and dump trailers, reliable and Chilton open aluminum and steel trailers. With over 50 pre-owned low mileage cars, trucks, and SUVs, Miller's has just the vehicle you are looking for. Miller's also carries a full line of Alumacraft boats and Manitou pontoon boats, complete with Evinrude outboards. Why not buy from racers who know what racers want and need? With Miller's sales and service on the corner of Highway 57 and K in Random Lake. Call Jerry, Tom, or Brad Miller today at 920-994-4358. That's Miller's Sales and Service, 920-994-4358. Spring is in the air, and PMF Landscape Supply in West Bend has everything you need with fresh mulch arriving daily. From premium hardwood mulch to hemlock and pine bark to enviro mulch in red, gold, chocolate brown, and black colors. PMF also has a large variety of decorative stone and granite, as well as field stone, topsoil, and compost. For all your landscaping needs, visit PMF Landscape Supply, 5470 River Road in West Bend. Call 262-338-8800 or visit pmflandscape.com. Friends of racing for many years, PMF Landscape Supply in West Bend. This is Two Pros and a Cup of Joe. Chip Kelly, it makes sense to me, man. Like, there has been a lot of stuff thrown on the table of head coaches. The head coach of a college football team is no longer a head coach. You know, you're really wearing the hat of a CEO. You have to hire and bring in these employees to make your team a competitive team. Two Pros. 
Cruz, LeVar Arrington, Brady Quinn, and a cup of Joe. Jonas Knox. Weekday mornings 5 to 8 a.m. on the Big 920 and your iHeartRadio app. And now the LTN Hour presents Dirt on the Dirt with Brian Schmidt. There was some dirt racing across the country this year that do- or this weekend that dodged the uh, poor weather. Uh, we'll start Thursday in Stewart, Iowa. The 2024 IMCA Frostbusters kicked off with the modified feature winner being Ethan Broxma, and the stock cars was Austin Buzek. Also on Thursday in Humboldt, Kansas, the USMTS Modified Series King of America's night number one, Darren Fuqua, was your winner there. Friday night, we're supposed to get started in Beaver Dam, but because of the spectacular weather we had on Tuesday and Wednesday around here, lots of snow, lots of rain, lots of moisture altogether, that was uh, postponed for obvious reasons. But they did continue the Frostbusters in Marshalltown, Iowa, with Tom Barry Jr. winning the IMCA Modified feature, and the stock cars went to Damon Murdy. Night number two in Humboldt, Kansas, for the King of Americas for the USMTS Modifieds. Jake Tim got the win there. Poplar Bluff, Missouri, the Comp Cams Super Dirt Series for Super Late Models, $5,000 a win. That went to Tyler Stevens. Clayton, Alabama, the Buckshot Speedway for the Schaefer Oil Southern Nationals, $7,052 to win in the Super Late Models. Ashton Winger grabbed the win there. Osborne, Missouri, the U.S. 36 Raceway for the World of Outlaw NOS Energy Drink Sprint Car Series. David Gravel picked up his second win of the season. Bill Baylog was there. He finished 15th. The Extreme Outlaw Midgets were the undercard there, and Carter Sarf got the win. Last night, the main event for the King of Americas for the USMTS Modifieds in Kansas was rained out. I'm not sure exactly, but they're trying to find a date to reschedule that championship event. But Cedar Lake Speedway up in New Richmond, Wisconsin, gets the award as the first track to open in the state of Wisconsin. They ran their season opener, and in the late models, it was Sammy Mars grabbing the win. The USRA Limited Late Models went to Matt Larson, and the Modifieds went to Tayton Hansen. So a lot of times, Cedar Lake isn't quite able to get that underway because the weather is usually worse out there than it is here, but it was flipped this year, and they got their race in. Boone, Iowa, Saturday night for the Frostbusters. Ethan Broxma got another win in the Modifieds, and the stock cars went to Rod Richards. Mojave Valley, Arizona, the USAC Amsoil CRA Sprint Cars. Kevin Thomas Jr. got the win. Brownstown, Indiana, the Northern All-Star Super Late Model Series, 5,000 to win. That went to Dennis Erb Jr. Harrisburg, Arkansas, the old number one speedway for the Comp Cams Super Late Model Series. This is an awesome name of this race here. The Cow Patty 40. <laughs> $5,000 to win, and Morgan Bagley got the win there. I haven't heard his name in quite a while. He used to be an big, outlaw regular. You got a big Fe- cow, Eddie? Yeah, I don't know. I did, there was no picture of the trophy. I can only imagine what it must be. <laughs> Phoenix City, Alabama, the East Alabama Motor Speedway for the Schaefer Oil Southern Nationals. $10,053 to win. That went to Kyle Bronson on a last. With the Lucky Land Slots, you can get lucky just about anywhere. This is your captain speaking. Uh, we've got clear runway and the weather's fine, but we're just going to circle up here a while and uh, get lucky. No, no, nothing like that. It's just these cash prizes add up quick. So I suggest you sit back, keep your tray table upright, and start getting lucky. Play for free at LuckyLandslots.com. Are you feeling lucky? No purchase necessary. Void where prohibited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details. Corner last lap pass. Bulls Gap, Tennessee, the Volunteer Speedway, the XR Super Series, $30,000 to win for the Super Late Models. That went to Mike Marler. And finally, Colcord, Oklahoma, the Arrowhead Speedway for the World of Outlaw Nash Energy Drink Sprint Car Series, the Jason Johnson Classic. That went to Sheldon Houdenchild, and Bill Baylog finished 18th. That is everything we have for this week. This week in asphalt, uh, Five Flags Speedway had race number one for the Pro Late Models. It's kind of their road to the Snowflake as part of the Snowball Derby. Uh, that was on Friday night. Seth Christensen won it. Mike Litchfield made the haul down there. Had a few challenges, ended up finishing 10th. On Saturday, the Cars Tour was at Hickory Motor Speedway. Connor Zilich was the late model stock winner. In the Pro Lates, Kyle Campbell was the winner, and Caden Quapple ended up hitting the wall on his own by himself and ended up 14th. On Saturday, the CRA Street Stocks were at Bristol. Austin Maynard was your winner. James Swan was down there for it, and despite showing good speed in practice, someone leaked fluid on the track, and basically nobody in his group made it in on time. Uh, But boy, did he put on a show in that B-Main, though. He was the show, uh, but did not end up making the main despite finishing, I think, fifth in that. Um, The Vores uh, Compact Series ran down there as well, too. 
And we had three Wisconsinites finishing in the top ten. Uh, finishing second was Sean uh, uh, Bonar, I think it was. Bonar? Bower. Bower. I'm sorry. Not Boner. <laughs> That's terrible. Uh, wow. Finishing fifth was Carter Stark. And then uh, Devin Dixon was seventh. I'm sorry. Is that all you think about? Sorry, I couldn't help it. It was right there. Well, it's just what came up. Uh, the icebreaker will be at the Dells on Jeez. Saturday. And then, as we mentioned earlier, the uh, Wimmer family announced the sale of State Park Speedway in Wausau at the end of this race season. That's all uh, I uh, Dells, you know, coming up this Saturday. Um, I don't know if anybody saw this, but to the surprise of absolutely no one, Rich Bickle is coming out of retirement. At least that's the rumor. Now, I sent him a couple of texts asking him about it and laughing and telling him, you know, giving him the old Brett Favre line, you know, are you retired or aren't you? I said, what you need to do when Dean Strom is off doing one of his NASCAR gigs somewhere at Slinger, you ought to come up and be my pit reporter. Wouldn't that be fun? You and I could, could uh, you know, talk and you could and you could interview drivers. I would love to hear Rich Bickle interview other drivers. Wouldn't oh, that my be? gosh. What the hell was that? That would be just <laughs> priceless. It would be priceless. You better and, have a disclaimer before it happens because yeah. – I don't know if he can keep that clean. Keep your say, keep yeah. your kids. Uh, yeah, put your ear muffs on the kids. They're going to need it. But uh, that's. Uh, by the way, um, when I was uh, texting with Lance Allen this week around his uh, his uh, announcement earlier, um, he told me that the Rice Lake dirt track up there was sold too. Um, I didn't give me any details. I don't know who bought it. If it's going to stay in business or whatever it is, but uh, that's been in. That's been a track for a long time up there. So, um, Todd, maybe maybe Rich can be your in car reporter this year. Ooh, <laughs> he yes. That, I could always ask. You know, maybe he could do some. Uh, I mean, I tell you, they're trying to put a, a entry list together for Slingers opener coming up in two weeks, and coming up with names. We came up with forty four legitimate cars. I mean, you always oh. make say like, who's going to come or not, and so I'm not sure they're all going to show up. But I mean, just to start off with that, there should be a pretty big field of cars for that. Heck yeah. I would say so. Um, it, and no, Rice Lake, just quickly on that, that was that was purchased by somebody, and they're sticking a ton of money into it. Uh, back in March 13th, they poured a whole new backstretch wall there, so whoever purchased it is nice. uh, sticking quite a bit of money into it, so that place should be good to go for a while. Oh, God so. bless America. You bet. Uh, the LTN podcast is available on iHeart, iTunes, and all major platforms. Do not forget to check out Racing Nuggets. Tell them about this uh, current program, young lady. The current one has Dick Johnson on. I don't know if uh, a lot of you probably know him. You probably, you probably don't realize you know him, but he has been very involved with Lacrosse and Dell's uh, Raceway Park, which was formerly Motor Speedway. Did a lot of artwork for that. He was a race director. He was a scorer. Uh, just a lot of really great history with that man. So he's the current episode. And then debuting on Tuesday, we have Bubba Pollard on the Racing Nuggets podcast. Oh, that's great. I love it. That's That'll be a must, must listen radio. And it's not even radio. It's video. Can you imagine? You get the CPJ. That's the best part about it. <laughs> we'll be right back. From racing engines to street engines, long blocks to turnkey packages, or complete custom engines, just ask and Wagner Automotive can fill your needs, all backed by many years of racing experience. These years of experience have provided reliability and performance that customers need to win races. Wagner's has been building championship winning engines for top teams from NASCAR to short tracks in your backyard. This expertise has carried over to street engines they supply to top custom car builders. The Wagner Company in the heart of Wisconsin is outfitted with the state-of-the-art machinery necessary to design, manufacture, build, and test custom engines and their accessory parts. Dyno services are independently available for anyone needed to test their engine. Wagner's company can also provide you or your company with production CNC machining or welding services. All your questions and requests are handled personally by Casey Wagner. Just give us a call at 920 394 3 Five five seven, or visit our website at wagnerautomotive.com. 
This Saturday at Dell's Raceway Park, the Alive for Five Super Late Bottle Tree Turn for the 10th Annual Icebreaker 100, presented by Wegner Automotive. See the Midwest's best super late model drivers go door-to-door in heart-pounding racing action for the first big event of the 2024 racing season, plus Midwest Truck Series and 602 Late Models. Gates open at 11, qualifying at 12.30 and racing at 2. Get your tickets online at DellsRaceWayPark.com and save. Dell's Raceway Park, located two miles west of I-1994 at exit 85, just off Highway 12. Dell's Raceway Park, where the best in the Midwest race. Rain date, Sunday, April 14th. This, keep it on the down low here, is the Dan Patrick Show. We're finding that quarterbacks and what they do off the field may be as valuable as what they do on the field. Patrick Mahomes is following that blueprint. He decided that he was going to free up over $20 million in cap space this offseason. Mahomes is competing with Tom Brady, and now you want to see if you can get to seven seasons. Dan Patrick. The Dan Patrick Show. Weekday mornings, 8 to 11 on the Big 920 and your iHeartRadio app. Welcome back to the final segment of LTN. Chris Myers, you know the name. He was a football guy on Fox. He does racing. He's the one that told us, mentioned in passing, that there was going to be a baseball game at Bristol. Uh, I think he said the Atlanta Braves was going to be one of the two teams. I don't know who told him that, but uh, I haven't seen very much more about that. Have any of you seen anything? No, nothing. Okay. Well, it's interesting. He also said this week that there will be no Easter racing in the near future. Now, I don't know who gives him this information or if he's supposed to be whispering this kind of thing, but uh, he did say that. He also did say, big surprise, that uh, they're done racing at the Coliseum, but they will be somewhere in California. Well, this is all things that we kind of assumed I don't know if he was just, you know, speaking what everybody else kind of knew anyway. But, uh, uh, again, we're trying to figure out where they would go in California. They, they could build the racetrack in Fontana. They have some land there, I understand. Uh, but not as much as they had before now. But, uh, you know, it seemed like they, there would be a good place for a short track, wouldn't you think? The Easter but, thing makes sense because... This year, we're, we're kind of pushed up against it because of the Olympics and having to take those weeks off. New TV contract next year. When Next time the Olympics roll around, you won't have to worry about that either because that'll be during their TNT and Amazon period there. So I would assume now they're going to just go back to having that be one of their off weeks. Or, more flexibility. or do what they used to do with Mother's Day and run it Saturday night. That could be too. You know, that's that's Or go possible. back. I mean, right now they have off usually on Father's Day weekend. They've done that a couple times or go back to racing on that weekend again. Yeah, interesting. Hey, we got 2,000 shifts coming today. Uh, It will be televised for the first time on FS1. It's the first time it will not be on public television. So if you don't have FS1, you're kind of out of luck. The green is at 211 this afternoon. Uh, Forecast is for the 60s with 0% chance of rain. Um, I would say, um, looking at this list here, and where I went and put some money yesterday at the old casino, um, I'm going to pick uh, Willie B today uh, because, for one, all the uh, Hendrick cars are painted ruby red for the ruby anniversary of uh, Hendrick, blah, blah, whatever it is. And why not? That would be a good place for uh, Willie B to win it. By the way, Brian, you uh, picked correctly last week, and uh, and the 11 car, uh, Dan... Dan took the 19 car. Yeah, Brian jumped the restart. Hey, man. Yeah. 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 <laughs> we were going to get a win no matter what. Yeah, okay. I'll tell you what. Dan, why don't you go next? And I'm going to go with Bubba Wallace today. Ooh. He sure has been better. Don't sleep on the 48 car. Exactly. I agree with that. Brian? I'm going to keep riding the horse that's given me victories. So I got to go with Denny Hamlet again. He's going to sweep the uh, short track season and... Maybe it'll have controversy again also. The crowd will go wild. Peach? Ryan Blaney. Um, what's what's the deal with Fords lately? I mean, let's look at the Fords that have chances of winning week in and week out. Well, you have the 12 and the 22, and pretty much that's it. 
14 is really good here too. He he's been running well the last couple times they've run here, and he's starting fifth today. So that would be really cool to see him get a win. He needs one in the worst way. All those Stuart House cars have stepped up, and you obviously know if one's on the chopping block, you know one will. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now, is it the least performing one to get rid of, or is it you know the the top car is going to fetch the most dollars for the charter? So I mean, those guys got to be wondering what. How do you keep your job? I suppose. Run yeah. Through. And yeah. then who buys that charter? I think Trackhouse or 2311. Those are the two I would look at. Those yeah. are the two obvious ones, but there's What lot about of- uh, JR Motorsports? Because Dale and Tony, good friends. And uh, Dale has often talked about wanting a good start a cup team. And yeah. oddly enough, I know that Connor Zelich is under contract with Trackhouse, but he was up on top of the the hauler for uh, JR Motorsports, too. So... Not gonna pay fifty million dollars for it though. Yeah. Well, <laughs> getting getting that kind of money is probably one of the reasons why Stewart is willing to sell one of those. Right. Charters. But if you're not going to get that kind of money, do you take a or best offer? Right. You know. I don't mm-hmm. know. Maybe it's less interest to hold off till the next deal gets signed. We well, that's think. that's the next thing, you know, Dan. Uh, or till Honda comes in. Uh, you had to go and ruin the mood, didn't you? It's like farting in church. You just shouldn't be doing stuff like that. Or in first class. <laughs> As has been done in the past. <laughs> All right, well, we're not historically great at doing this, although that's changing. Uh, Brian has been pretty hot lately at picking, uh, and so, uh, but you keep picking that 11 car and you're not going to have anybody i don't you. like them either so i mean i think that would be bad luck but when i pick anybody else they don't win so i keep thinking i'd voodoo the guy and i sure thought it was a done deal last week but he still wins That's good we've got about half the races picked right i now. know brian i think has three now i had two wins had it's big, just right? me that that sucks pretty bad oh. you suck at it i guess okay there, so i won't say we. i didn't want to say that that's all right and we give you the first pick <laughs> I forgot to give you, I, and I forgot to give the results from uh, the uh, funny cars yesterday out here. They ran the Sonoma portion uh, of the uh, uh, Pomona, 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 not Sonoma, Pomona. There's a lot of Onas out there, aren't there? John Pomona. Force beat Stewart's driver Matt Hagen in the Ageless funny. Wonder. How old is John these days? That? The unseen staff here at uh, LTN, Aaron Baird, Paul Reichert, and Dan Casey. So just thought I'd uh, point those out. And uh, uh, here's something to remember. Don't stare at the sun tomorrow, all right? (laughs) Not a big deal. Hey, real race cars have doors, even if they do climb in through the windows. LTN is produced and directed by Dangerous Dan Margetta. Our engineer is Matt Losey. For all of us involved with the program, We appreciate you tuning in every week, and we'll see you next week, everybody. This program has come to you live from multiple locations via Skype. Any and all comments expressed on this show do not necessarily express the opinions of this station, its employees, or advertisers. Your comments are always welcome at mail at ltnradionetwork.com. Find us at facebook.com slash ltnradionetwork. And thank you for your support since 1985. Tune in again next Sunday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time for the LTN Hour on the LTN Radio Network. With lucky landslots, you can get lucky just about anywhere. Dearly beloved, we are gathered here today to... Has anyone seen the bride and groom? Sorry, sorry, we're here. We were getting lucky in the limo and we lost track of time. No, Lucky Land Casino, with cash prizes that add up quicker than a guest registry. In that case, I pronounce you lucky. Play for free at LuckyLandSlots.com. Daily bonuses are waiting. No purchase necessary. Void were prohibited by law. 18 plus. Terms and conditions apply. See website for details.